Call it Nuevo Latino, Pan American, or Latin American, it's one of the hottest food trends in New York City today. Thanks to my guest today, Chef Rafael Palomino, who is showing everyone what Latin American cuisine is all about. His restaurant is Bistro Latino, which is also the name of his cookbook that unlocks the secrets to this exciting food. Hi, Rafael. Hi, Amy. Tell me about Latino American food. It's an exciting cuisine full of flavor, energy, and aroma. Mm -hmm. And it has different influence from different cuisines. It has a Japanese influence in improving cuisine, right. an Italian influence in Argentinian cuisine, mm -hmm. and in Colombian and Brazilian, it has an Indian and European influence. So there are a tremendous amount of countries and cultures and cuisines that really pull into this that Correct. you draw from for all this excitement and all these flavors and smells. Yes. Yeah. Latin American cuisine is uh, being able to have a braised axe tail with a Pinot Noir, chili Pinot Noir, right, right. or a pineapple and coconut rice, mm -hmm. or a nice piece of sirloin steak with a chimichurri sauce, which is the South American pesto. I love that, yeah. Well, you brought with you some um, um, interesting ingredients that you use that are typical to the cuisine, right? Tell me what you've got here. Uh, right in front of us, first we have uh, uh, tomate de arbol, which is uh, yellow tomatoes, and right. we use them in desserts. Yeah, and it looks sweet. As a matter of fact, I thought they were peaches when you first brought them out. Yeah, they didn't yeah. look like that. Oh, yes, wonderful. Uh, okay. In the middle, we have our brown sugar, which is called panela. Right. And we use that in the winter mm -hmm. when it gets really chilly. We put anisette or fire water, which we call uh, aguardiente. Mm -hmm. In Greek, they call it uzo. Yes, yes. And right <laughs> I next, know that one. <laughs> and right next to us, we have our uh, eagles, which are figs. Mm -hmm. And that's cooked in uh, cinnamon, cloves, mm. and a little brown sugar. Oh. And they're incredible. Oh, that's, that, that's wonderful. Tell me, um, how did you get your start? Because it's pretty interesting how you became a chef. Well, uh, while I was going through high school, I was looking for a part-time job, and mm -hmm. I was lucky enough that I found something at the River Cafe in New York City. Right. All, every New Yorker knows about the River Cafe. And mm -hmm. I was able to become very good friends with the renowned Larry Forgion. Mm -hmm. And after that, I was lucky enough to go to France and work with uh, Michel Garrard, mm -hmm. came back and worked with Jonathan Waxman, right. Charlie Palmer, You've had some incredible culinary talent that's, that's been around you to really hone your skills and develop you as into the chef that you are today. I was very lucky. Yeah. Well, we're making some of your wonderful dishes today out of your book and from your, from your restaurants. Um, we're starting off with some of the really classics, and then you're going to show us some of the twists. What really strikes me, and the point we really want to get across, is that Latin American food is not a version of Mexican food, right? No, people and tend to think it's a rice and beans right. or it's spicy. Right, but it's not. So we're making some amazing things today. Tell us about it. We're starting with uh, paella, mm -hmm. and uh, we're following up with uh, shrimp and pineapple skewers. Okay. We'll, fo we'll follow up with uh, marinated citrus palomilla. Which is? Which is a sirloin steak, marinated in uh, beer and citruses. Mm -hmm. And we'll finish up with a classical, which is a chipotle gratin. Okay, which is very French. Correct. Okay, terrific. Let's get going. Great. Let's start off with that paella. Now, Correct. this is wonderful because this is a one-pot dish. This is classical. One pot, and everything is going to go in this. You can make this in about 45 minutes total Correct. time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is really terrific. We're, we've got our pan already hot Beautiful. already. So I'm going to add some oil to your pan for you. Thank you. Okay. You can tell me when. That's perfect. Good. We're going to uh, place the uh, garlic. Okay. If you could be kind enough to assist me with it. I would love to. Thank you. <laughs> go ahead, put it in there. Ready to go. Okay, okay, so we've got some garlic. Perfect. Okay. We'll sweat it up a little. Just a little. We we'll don't want any color to it, right? No, obviously not. Okay. We'll put the uh, saffron. Okay, go ahead. And we've got some saffron threads. Now, saffron is not um, something that we probably cook a lot with, no, but it's very... It's very expensive, and the saffron is made out of petals from uh, different flowers. Right. And okay, I, now now what are you adding here? This, this is, is a, I'm sorry, this is a songoya. Yes. And it's uh, a blend sp uh, spice. It has um, garlic, mm -hmm. cumin, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. And a natto? Correct. Powder, yes. yes. And so if you can't find this in your grocery stores, you give a recipe for it in the book so that you can make this spice blend and really get this authentic yeah. flavor. Yeah, what's lucky about right now is that you're able to find uh, this in uh, all the supermarkets mm -hmm. nationwide. Okay. So mm. now we add the rice? Correct. Okay. Now this is actually what we call a pilaf Correct. technique, where you take the oil from the pan and you go ahead and coat the rice. If you've ever made sticky rice at home and you didn't want sticky rice, no. <laughs> and you ever wondered why, it's because you missed this step. If you coat the rice with a little bit of the oil from the bottom of the pan and it gets a little toasted at the same you time. You get all the flavors in there. Yeah, you get great throw. flavor and you get you a real... Do, that's perfect. You want to do it for a few seconds and then we'll place the, uh, the stock. Okay. So we're going to 
put the stock in. Now, what kind of a stock are, are we using? We have here? a fish stock. Fish stock, okay. Because we're going to be. Yeah. Ah. And what, what's good about this dish is that you could actually do different types of paella. We mm -hmm. could do a vegetarian paella. Right. We could do a meat paella with a venison and duck. We're going to yeah. do it right now. Let's let it come to a boil and then place everything on. Great. Okay. Okay, we've got a good simmer going on the rice, and that's important so the rice begins to cook before we add anything else Correct. to the dish. And so we're going to add the tomatoes, right? Perfect. And you left the skin on these, right, Rafael? Yes. And we've just really taken out the seeds and given them a nice dice. And to those, then we're going to add the clams? Yes. What kind of clams have you got? Is there any little preference? Net, no, you can use little net clams, are ideal. I mm -hmm. think that uh, they tend to have more flavor than the cherry stones. Mm -hmm. More flavor? Yes. Okay. So we're just going to put this in. That smells great. There. Yeah, you're liking this. <laughs> okay. So you're going to add some lobster to this. Yes. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to place the uh, knife right in the center. Right. You got to make sure that the lobsters are alive. Right. Now, if anybody's squeamish about doing this way with the live lobsters, uh, we were talking about this earlier, you can certainly put them in a large pot of boiling water. Right, and, that's another option. Yeah, another option, and just blanch it for about two minutes, and then go ahead and, and oh. cut it up and add your pieces then. So what you're doing, you're cutting the uh, head in half, mm -hmm. the tail, right. and then you got the, uh, the knuckle meat. Okay, and when you're doing this, if you don't have a meat cleaver, Okay, Raphael's choice is, is to use his knife. We talked knife. about that this morning. Yes, we did. <laughs> um, to use the, uh, the the back end of the knife of the where knife. it's stronger and where it's more blunt. Well, it's uh, more manageable. Right. A lot of people, the blender, the uh, clearer tends to be very heavy. Right, right. And they're not used to using it, whereas you're used to the weight of the knife here. Okay. Bing! <laughs> I think it's alive. <laughs> Okay. Well, it, that, it's either that or, you know, later on we just think it's calamari. We yeah, <laughs> we got to charge extra. Okay. okay. So we're going to give this a few minutes. We'll come back and we, you know, we need to wait for these clams to open up and that's the sign that they'll be done. Correct. All right. Now, take a look. They're all open saying hello. It's perfect. We're ready for dinner. They're nice and open. They're ready to go. So we're, on, we're ready to progress through the recipe. Okay. So we'll follow up with the uh, mussels. Okay. So the mussels go in. And we add these after the clams because these take a much shorter period of time to Correct. cook, right? Correct. They, they have the tendency of our cooking when you place the two of them at the same time. Right, right. So we add them a little bit later so they don't get tough. Correct. Alrighty. Now the next thing, this is my favorite part of the paella. The, la the chorizo? Yeah. Okay, great. Now, this. I'll do the honors. Okay, yes. This okay. is like the hallmark. This is a Colombian chorizo. Yes. We have two different types of chorizo. You got uh, dried and you got fresh. Right, now this is fresh. Yes. Okay, so this is like a fresh sausage. A lot of people have different definitions of chorizo. Mm -hmm. In uh, Colombia, we uh, do it a uh, pork sausage, mm -hmm. uh, cumin, cilantro. It's, right. not, it's similar to uh, the Mexican, but it's, not, it's a lot lighter. It's and a lot it's lighter in color. And it's not as uh, spicy. So now that it's uh, sliced, mm -hmm. you can see the cilantro there. Yeah, all those fresh spots. herbs. Right. I love this stuff. Okay. Okay. We're gonna place it in here. Okay, does that yeah. go right in? Yes. You bring them over. Thank you. Roll them on in. Boy, this is getting to be a feast. We're going to do the uh, lobster. Okay, and the whole thing goes in. Is there anything um, of the lobster that you, during the butchering process, that you've left out? No, you utilize everything. The whole thing goes in. We'll give this how, how much longer now? Um, 10, 10, 20 seconds more. Oh, okay. Because okay, they're already open, they're butterflies, so the heat is actually a direct okay, contact so now, to the lobster. Okay, so now, the paella, the basic dish, the nuevo, the new parts of this dish are really the sazon. Sazon goya, uh -huh. the chorizo, yes. the black beans. The, and we're coming to those, so that's going to be the garnish. So they're really the new twist to Correct. this very traditional dish. And in the book, I have an option that uh, you could use uh, sofrito or orogo, which is a uh, tomato and onion relish. Right, which is cooked. Correct, and it's uh, tomato, onion, cilantro, Mm -hmm. Good olive oil. Mm. Bingo. Bingo. Here. All right, we're ready for the shrimp. Okay. Let's add those. Want to make sure that they're clean and deveined. Already cleaned and deveined. And nowadays, you know, you can get that from your local grocer. Yes. The, the local fish store, they, they automatically already do that for you. And how much time have we got from this point? My mouth's starting to salivate. I'm ready to eat. <laughs> I'm ready to get my fork. How much time are we talking here? A few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. So yes. we'll come back. Correct. Okay. All right, that shrimp have got that beautiful pink color to them. The lobster is also done. He should be done. Yes. But he has these few more seconds. Okay, and so we're ready for the final glory. Okay. Okay, the sprinkling. This is the garnish, and again, this is this is your new touch. This is the the nuevo touch, right? Correct. The sprinkling of the beans, and this really adds. You know, this really helps to make it the final main meal if it isn't already. Beautiful black beans as a Perfect. garnish. 
and some fresh scallions, green onions. Right. Nuevo Latino, Pan American, however you want to call this cuisine. This is a feast to behold. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Now, you said you're from Colombia, Rafael? Yes, I'm from Colombia, Bogota. From the capitals, yeah? Yes. Okay, so what are we making next year? Pinchos de camarones con piña. Come again? <laughs> Pineapple and uh, shrimp skewers. That one I got. Okay, so um, what are we going to start with here? We're going to uh, take the shrimp. Mm -hmm. and it's ideal to use jumbo shrimp. The big ones? Yes. So when you buy them in the store, these are called uh, 15 unders or? You know, uh, usually you want to use uh, U15s. U15s, under for, 15s. Uh, so the people at home, they'll say, what is a U15? It's usually the size of it. The size of it. pound. Mm -hmm. So if they're 15 or 16 in the pound, that means that these are going to be about an ounce a piece. Correct. So these are pretty jumbo babies. Okay. Yep. So we're going to take our... So we're going to take the shrimp. Mm -hmm. We're going to place them in this uh, bowl. Okay. Thank you. And uh, we're going to marinate them with uh, garlic and uh, olive oil. Okay. Thank you. Garlic and olive oil. It's like uh, very similar to gambas al ajillo. Okay. So, Spanish dish. Now, I know we're going to add a marinade um, to this additionally. Why do we go through this step of the oil? And uh, we got some garlic going on in here yes. too, right? I'll add your garlic. To get additional flavor to it. Okay. We don't want it to be too sweet because of the guava paste. Okay. Alrighty. So you're going to stir that around. Yeah, right? And in the meantime, I'm going to come over here and make that marinade. And we've got um, some really um, interesting ingredients. I love the flavors here. Now, first going into the food processor, we're going to put the guava. Right. Right. And this is guava paste? Yes, it is. And um, now, this is, uh, this is pretty incredible. It usually comes in, in your book, it says it comes in, in blocks or in... It comes in blocks, and, mm -hmm. uh, but this is the uh, real McCoy. Okay. We call it uh, a, a guayaba. Uh -huh. Obeleños, okay. back home. Okay, and it comes in, it's wrapped in this case in what? It's wrapped in banana leaves. Mm -hmm. And this is a treat back home. They usually, uh, you mix it in, create like a Napoleon with a uh, mozzarella cheese. Okay, yeah, actually, if you can get a, a really good look at that, it, it is really quite soft on the inside. Right. And on the uh, outside, you have uh, arequipe, mm -hmm. which is uh, one of the other recipes that I have in the book. Okay. So I'm going to add about some um, That's perfect. One and a half pieces of that and to that we're going to add some cilantro. fresh cilantro. It smells great. Mm, I love this. Now, a lot of times you can uh, get this the Chinese markets all Right. Yeah, oh, they Latin have this in, in most of the stores um, nowadays. It actually looks like Italian flat leaf parsley. Correct. All right, and to this now we're going to add in some shallots. Some shallots and um, shallots are really just kind of a cost a, a cross between the the garlic and the onion. Yes. You okay. want, when uh, you use shallots and when you find them, when you chop them that fine, you want to be able to use uh, a little wine as mm -hmm. a tip for back home so they don't oxidize. Ah, oh, that's a good tip. All right, now we have the can. Now these are chipotles, which are right. really smoked jalapenos. Correct. Okay, and normally when you buy them in the can, they're going to be in a tomato vinegar base. Right. Okay, and you say that one of these really is worth about a tablespoon. Yes. Okay, so you can, I'll pull one out there for you. You can see one of these is worth about a tablespoon. And I've already ground one up, although it wasn't necessary because everything's going into the processor. I'm going to put about a tablespoon in. Perfect. And let me see where's my top. Give it a whirl. That guava's going around in there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty nice. That gives it, the uh, chipotles are going to give it some serious heat. Right. And the guava paste is going to be some beautiful, smooth sweetness. And with the garlic and the olive oil, that will balance the whole dish. Okay, excellent. Let's take it out of here. And I'm going to add that then right to your... Let me assist you. Thank you. There you go. Add it right in to those shrimp. Now, do these have to marinate at all? They do. When you're placing it in the grill, you want to keep the grill medium heat mm -hmm. because uh, with the sweetness of, uh, of the guava, you right. don't want them to caramelize and burn. We're going to skewer these. Okay. I'm following your lead. Okay. Okay, so these are so large that you want to make sure that they're not going to flop off. Right. right, so you got it in the two spots. Okay, two spots. So we go from one side down to the other. Okay. And take them all the way up or just in the middle? Uh, in, no, all the way up. All the way up. Okay. Yeah. And then pineapple? Yes. Okay, I'm going for the pineapple. Okay. Okay. 
more shrimp? How many shrimp? How many do you put uh, on? You do two layers. Two layers, okay. Yeah. So you we're getting two shrimp.